Thank you, Steffi. Thank you for having us. And uh, so this is Andre, and I'm Martin Borsavsky. I, <laughs> I, so the idea we have is, which was given to me by DLD, and I think it's a good one, is that there's journalists who interview entrepreneurs, but there's conversations between entrepreneurs, which I think work better sometimes. And they work better because a lot of people in this audience are business people or people who care about building a technology company or people who care about how ideas disseminate on the internet. And the case of Badu, what I found remarkable when I met Andre is that in somewhat of a stealth mode, Badu was growing to be probably the most profitable startup of Western Europe. And I think that this morning when I interviewed or I had a conversation with David Karp from Tumblr, we left the subject of monetization to the side. I mean, Tumblr is a site that grows and grows and so far without monetization. And I think Andre has found a way to build a community that is uh, active, but it's actually also highly monetized. And so at first I thought, are you mic'd? Uh, you're mic'd, okay. <laughs> I thought you could introduce yourself and just give you a little background for people here. It's the first time that you come at DLD on yourself and how you go to build Badu. to Google AdSense, how it works. Uh, two years later, I saw yeah, this company. This, this morning, by the way, by chance, I met a former Google top manager who told me that Google was trying to buy you an analytics company. Yeah, it was a deal for $140 million, but uh, this deal was not happened because Russian government stopped somehow. <laughs> Why would they want to stop that? I don't get it. No comments, I don't know. <laughs> So, but um, I left. I left Begun. This company, by the way, called Begun. Um, I left Begun pretty early, and uh, I moved my. Uh, actually, it was 2004, and I again I moved my attention to another new business called Mamba. It's the biggest dating platform today in Russian-speaking countries. Uh, for now, it's almost 10 or 12 million active users and very profitable, very popular. And in 2006, I started Badu. So Badu, it was a kind of social network, very similar to uh, Facebook today. So all about uh, track your friends' activity, all about uploading pictures. And again, two years later, I uh, changed my... <laughs> uh, uh, so we, we, in 2008, we changed um, business, business model completely because uh, so actually, the story. You went and you you went from being mainly a web present. That what I understand now is mostly uh, showing Badu on, a, on the iPhone, on Android, and and appearing everywhere. One thing that I I found surprising when I met Andre is that you would say many times that he's kind of like a local hero or a person that uh, was doing this out of Russia, was building these companies out of Russia, but. Even though your company was funded, I understand initially uh, with a $30 million investment from the investors who were so happy with the previous uh, investments, for five years now probably, uh, your life has been uh, building a company that has nothing to do with Russia. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yesterday was a terrible party, actually. I slept like a couple of hours. <laughs> no, no, let, me, let me switch off first. Your mother. I'm back. <laughs> so I was saying 
that you had built a company now Badu that has nothing to do with Russia. Yeah, so uh, started a company in 2006, and I back and forth uh, from Spain to Russia. And, uh, and actually, in 2006, I moved to London, and we established our first Badu office in London. Now it's about 150 employees. No, actually, it's a lot more, uh, but uh, most of them is uh, outsourced. And uh, 140, 150 in, in house, and uh, this is all technicians, marketing, and a whole bunch of things. Whole bunch of yeah, people. but also your user base. What I was seeing, like my wife Nina and I were on vacation in Uruguay, and I was testing Badu with her consent. Yeah, Badu is everywhere. And uh, and I saw in Uruguay you had a lot of people on Badu. Like it, it obviously it's become pretty global. Yeah, um, we... and probably. One of these phenomena that it's hard to understand why it's successful in a certain country and not other countries, right? I mean, you build a platform, you put it globally, and you see what happens, right? Um, yeah, but um, this is uh, part of the magic. Sometimes you know how the things work, sometimes not. But we, um, we started actually from Spain. It was the uh, first business development deal which I done. Uh, we acquired some small uh, small. Uh, messenger, uh, it was like 40,000 users, and uh, so from, from 40,000 users, Badu actually started, and uh, the next big country for us was Mexico, then all, all Latin America, all around uh, Latin America. And then uh, maybe, maybe half a year later, or a year later, uh, France became to be the second market for us, then Italy. No, and I should also say that there's a Spanish connection to Andre because he's, your family, I understand, lives in Spain. He speaks Spanish very well, and so there was, it was hardly... Um, I mean, it's not your usual Russian company that first makes it big in Mexico or, uh, or Latin America. So what I thought maybe uh, Jessica, who also works at Badu, uh, that you could join us and, and show... Uh, I, I understand you had a few, a few slides. Uh, that you were going to show up, Badu, is that so? No, but, but I think we should do that because a lot of people oh, yeah, are right. not familiar with what Badu is. Uh, and it's become such a phenomenon that I think it should be explained, explained to the audience. Okay, so we uh, that's what the phone was for, I get it. In any case, this is the best way to get Andre to not look at his phone, is to steal it from him. Um, OK, here we go. It's very simple. Um, you fire up Badu, and immediately you're going to see the people who are near you right now online, ready to chat. Uh, you can also see people in the greater Munich area. Uh, we're going to do this on screenshots, just because one never knows with Wi-Fi. So this will be a little bit linear. Um, but you look through the profiles. You see one that appeals to you. And you're kind of flipping through and so forth seeing different people, seeing what their interests are. And then perhaps you land on someone who appeals. In this case, perhaps I have the same interests as this woman, um, also into football. Um, clearly, the guy who did the screenshot is into football. Um, and it overlaps. Just, so I, I think th the, one of the most important part is uh, this woman 320 meters away from you. So yeah. she's just around the corner. So you can always see the distance as well, unless people choose to not display it. Um, then you can immediately start to chat. Um, you can check out photos. You obviously have your queue of messages of people who are contacting you and so forth. Absolutely. And if you find someone that interests you, you can immediately start to chat with them. Um, and eventually, if the conversation's going well, you could even share location and meet up. And actually, 50% of the conversations that start on Bedu end in an offline meetup. So it's actually pretty, um, pretty powerful. And some of, we, we won't bore you with PowerPoint, but we did do a couple of slides just to show you a bit about Badu, which we thought might be interesting. If they appear. <laughs> we can't because the Wi-Fi, it, it wasn't loading when we did it right before. So we, not everyone who may appear in your network may want to show that they're here and they're on Badu, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I disagree with that. I don't know. The, if you no, look, not actually, everyone, I meant. true, everyone depends on what you're on Badu for, yeah. and that's a really good point. Um, let me just show you first. Um, Martin mentioned Uruguay, 
we are very, very big in Latin America. Uh, like Andre said, the site started in Spain and basically went north from there in Europe and also crossed the Atlantic. And today in Brazil and Mexico, that's our largest user bases. But if you look at Southern Europe and East, um, Eastern European countries, we're actually between 7 and 12% of the internet populations. Um, and the other thing that's probably worth pointing out is I think a lot of people see that first thing with people nearby and assume it's a lot of really, really young people that are on the site. But actually, our main age group is uh, 25 to 34. And a third of our users are over 35. Um, and it's because it works at the end of the day. Um, people really do meet people on the site, and they use it for a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, I'm sure when I said that there was 50% of conversations end in an offline meetup, some people, Martin, for example, immediately thought, you know, hook up or something like that. And sure, that kind of stuff can happen, but what we actually see is that the majority of people use it for chatting, for meet, making friends, meeting new people. And then you also have all of the use cases that are tied to romance, would dating, say, and so would forth. Would you say that there was an offline behavior, which is like going to a pub or going to a bar or going to a nightclub, and that because Badu talks a lot about proximity, the fact that you can actually chat with people who you know are nearby, that this is also halfway to a personal encounter? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of what we try and do with Badu is bring the offline world online and mimic the way people have been interacting for ages, right? Um, one of the first things that Andre told me when I joined was he compared Badu to a nightclub or a bar. And, and it was, I think it's a really good comparison because when you go into any of those kinds of places, you always have the people that are trying to get more attention and more visibility, the people who are queuing perhaps um, to get special access, uh, people who are perhaps buying drinks for courtship or to, again, to get attention. And whether you're looking at just general user interactions on the site or monetization, those are the kinds of things that and, you play off and of. And maybe, Andrea, would I, what is, I mean, obviously, with, you had a, and such an incredible degree of monetization, which is something that a lot of people may very well envy in this room without advertising, yeah. right? There's no advertising in Badu. So uh, what is the secret of the monetization? Uh, so people pay. Uh, it's actually users. They pay for advertisement. Uh, uh, all the all the people on the on the present on the previous screen that uh, Jessica show uh, show you. Uh, all the people started by distance from you, and so you can see people 300 meters away, or 50 meters away, or a kilometer away. But if you want to be spotted on top of of this search result, and you want to be visible for, say, people who is uh, 10 miles away or 10 kilometers away, then you just pay a pound or a euro, and uh, you will be a few seconds on top, and which is give you lots of attention. Lots of other users will immediately start to contact you, and uh, uh, you will have lots of new friends. So I don't know if it was if, if, if everybody got the idea, but I, it, would you say then that it's vanity, that in some way it's it's your desire to position yourself and. You pay for that strategic position on the top of all the results, you know? So, so in a way, you're promoting yourself in the same way a company would promote itself placing a contextual uh, Google ad or... It's about promoting yourself, right? Yeah, That's it's pretty, pretty similar to Google. And uh, some of the people doing this like once a month, some of the people doing 20 times a day, so... Yeah, so, no, I, I find that also that maybe if we do, again, with a nightclub analogy, that may be like uh, ordering a bottle and having people come in and have drinks with you, or, or in a way you're positioning yourself somehow uh, uh, strategically. Did you have another slide you wanted to show? Or? I have many slides. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. People, look, in the end, you're talking about the most profitable startup in Western Europe. We should at least learn something about how this company does so well. Actually, well, we only uh, have one more business slide. Uh, go ahead, Andre. Yes. Uh, maybe, maybe I can tell the story of Badu, how the, yeah, basically the idea go happened. Go ahead, of course, of course. Yeah. So it, it will be short. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was uh, 2008 when uh, uh, I, with my friends, visit a uh, uh, a city called St. Petersburg. We've been for the business meetings and we, uh, we've done earlier. We have a few hours before we left and my friends invite me to a new cool place called Telephone Cafe, Telephone Bar. So we stay, we stay in the queue like 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, it was nice because the, in, in the queue was full of 
lots of young guys and girls. So we passed the queue, we get in, it was uh, inside 50 or 80 tables. I don't remember exactly, but a lot. It's a huge place. And uh, each table have a phone and a number. So we, we, we took one of the table and uh, a few, few minutes later we found three or two nice good looking girls over there on table 48 and we took the phone and called. So basically all the people who stay in the queue they just trying to get inside to quickly meet each other and uh, continue party somewhere. So we, we basically we did the same. We, uh, we spent 20 minutes with these girls and then we left to continue party. That's it. So basically this is the idea. That this sounds is very similar to how I had the idea of phone looking for Wi-Fi. <laughs> So the, 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 the idea to change um, business model from the um, typical classical Facebook uh, to keep in touch with your friends keep, uh, to, to meet, meet new friends. So it's, it's happened there in Telephone Bar. No, I think the difference with Facebook is Facebook is about the people you know and Badoo is about the people you may want to meet. Yeah. So Jess, your slides. Okay, well, if there was a slide up there, <laughs> no, well, we, we, we can see it. They can't. Ah. There you go. It's just um, it's the final business slide. There were only two. Um, basically, we did 150 million in gross sales. Um, and what this slide shows is not just obvious, the obvious revenue growth, but it's also showing that the monetizable user base is getting bigger and that they're sticking around. So we're pretty excited about the direction things are going in. Um, but and the user base, you said, is something like 30 million? So we're at 135 million registered users and 35 million are active on a monthly basis. Yeah. Pretty significant. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons that it works at the end of the day is that it, I mean, when you saw the app, it's very simple. And everything that Andre and, and that we've been talking about is all free. There is the freemium model, of course, with the micropayments and subscriptions. But I think the reason that we've been so successful is because it's so easy to use and because it's so intuitive. And I think what we're trying to do is really bring, mimic a lot of the things that we've seen in the offline world and at the same time reduce a lot of the barriers that you have in the real world. So at DLD, if everyone had walked in and everyone had had a sign saying, come chat to me, that would have been a pretty powerful thing. But that's not actually how the real world works. No, I know. I mean, a lot of people use Badoo in the sense that when I, when I knew that we were going to do this on stage at DLD, I put on Twitter, so who's on Badoo? And then my own secretary answered, and she said that she was on Badoo. <laughs> so Did you ask her why she wasn't I said, working? I, I didn't want to ask. <laughs> <you know. laughs> so I just had a couple of slides um, to show a little bit about what we think is part of the magic of Badoo, which is really looking at how people interact on the site, how we mimic the real world, and then ideally try and improve on it in some ways. So just very quickly, um, if you take the um, idea that Badu looks a lot like the real world, it's not going to surprise you a whole lot that in Badu, much like in the real world, men check out women a lot more than women check out men, meaning they look at the profiles a lot more. Um, men are not the most creative gift givers, which is something to keep in mind if any of you men are thinking of giving roses again this year for Valentine's Day. And finally, um, when we look, ask our users for their, their interests, which was one of the features that you saw on the demo, um, again, probably not surprising that on the top 20 list for women globally, you see something like the movie Twilight, and it just doesn't appear anywhere in the men's list, even in the top 100. So these are all very you know, funny and amusing because they play into gender stereotypes and whatnot. But there's plenty of things that then happen on Badu that show you how, in terms of the interactions, that show that you might start with something very intuitive that then actually changes. So if we look at Germany, German men tend to approach women at a far greater rate than German women will approach German men. And that's regardless of what they're on the site to do, friendship to romance, whatever the spectrum. And in fact, it's not just Germany that is consistent pretty much globally. Men approach women. And it's pretty much like that in the nightclub too, right? Um, but what happens is when you actually engage the women, then you see that women become a lot chattier. <laughs> and in some countries, you draw your own conclusions from that, and in some countries you'll actually see that women surpass men 
in terms of conversation. And this particular graph is pulled from Andre's home country of Russia. Um, so the, what we're trying to do is we look at these kinds of, um, this kind of behavioral data and then figure out how do we help these interactions along? How do we help people meet people? And the final thing I wanted to show um, was just, which I think is important and perhaps a little bit unique in terms of some of the other companies that are here, is that Badu's demographic is very much mass market. It's, um, it's all walks of life. It doesn't tend to be the early adopters and so forth. And just to give you an idea, going back to this interest feature, you can see where technology ranks in terms of our users' interests. It's there. They're all on apps. And my favorite part is the fact that the calculator ranks higher than the PC. So this is not the Badu crowd here. <laughs> so you mean the iPad is the interest 2,184? That's the ranking, yeah. And the ranking, oh, I see. But it means, what it means at the end of the day is that when we're sitting there and trying to think of new features or looking at this data, we have to make sure that we're solving a problem that our users have and not a problem that those of us as tech geeks might have on the site. And it makes it very interesting. So to close the, the conversation, I had a question that relates to what, something similar to what happened to us at Fond, you know? We're the largest Wi-Fi network in the world, but we're not yet in America. And generally, you can have an incredibly successful company, but when you're not in America, you get much less coverage and so on, because most of the media attention in the world of technology comes from America. At Fon, we announced that we're going to enter the United States. Is Badu, does Badu have a special strategy or a special plan to enter the United States? Yeah, it's uh, number one goal today for us. We go into US, we pretty, pretty, pretty much started. So we have lots of uh, marketing strategy. Uh, we thinking about some business development uh, thing. And, uh, uh, and we're looking, by the way, the greatest people to help. And Jessica, as an American, do you think there's anything different that the Americans, in the way Americans may react to Badu? I think. I think you have to take some of the cultural differences into account, no matter what country you're talking about. So Badu, the, the, the idea of getting more and more customized for users, and I think some of that will be on a country level and some of it will just be on the user level, is only a good thing. And I think that would be the true probably of pretty much any site that has a social aspect, because you need to make sure that the cultural norms, what people like, is all reflected on the site. Americans are a little less into, say, shots of men without their shirts on flexing on the beach. That works really well in some countries in which Badu is popular. So it, I think that part of it will be organic in terms of the American users putting on what they want to see on the site, but part of it might also be us looking at product changes. Well, so thank you very much, Andre and Jessica, and I think we all know much more about Badu, and congratulations on your work. Thanks.